This one hates the idea of talking to the Usurper Queen. We should be stabbing her in the neck. Still, Nalado sees the necessity, even if she doesn't like it. Yaraxia will almost certainly betray you, so be careful when you face her, yes? By marching into elsewhere with a mercenary army and slaughtering our rightful Kajiti rulers, not only did the usurper slay our king and queen, she murdered the rest of the royal family. Her crimes, they swarm around her like flesh flies on dung. A parley with the usurper queen. I doubt she'll agree to any sort of diplomatic solution. But it will buy us time to replenish our resources. Very well. Take Tharn and meet with Eurexia. In the meantime, we will rebuild what remains of the militia. She marched into Anequina with a mercenary army and conquered Rimen. Her forces killed the royal family and she illegally proclaimed herself queen. That makes her a usurper. I pray I live to see her pay for her crimes. I expected sorrow and despair, but the situation here goes beyond even my prophetic inklings. On the surface, yes, but peace through tyranny provides false harmony. Euraxia uses fear and threats of violence to keep the Khajiit in line, making them second-class citizens in their own province. It appalls me to think Euraxia and I are related. It would be better if I showed you. Follow me and I'll demonstrate the true depths of my half-sister's villainy. Her grip on Rimen is far tighter than it appears. Very well. But what I'm about to show you isn't for the faint of heart. Follow me. Have you ever visited a Rimen workhouse? They treat the Khajiiti workers worse than slaves. It's that building over there. For most of Rimen's Khajiit, it's the only job available to them. The workhouse serves to snare the poor and the destitute, those who fall behind on their debts. They come here to find employment and earn a decent wage, but the costs deducted to pay for room and board leave them worse off than they were before. One of the first things Euraxia did after declaring herself queen was to institute tariffs and fines that apply only to Khajiiti citizens. No one else needs the workhouse. A cruel... The Rimen Khajiit? No. Any complaints incur fines for causing a public disturbance or some other inane ordinance. No one wants to risk falling even further into debt. It's ingenious. Monstrous, but ingenious. Oh, Euraxia is clever. She pays the Khajiiti, and the workhouse isn't technically a prison. On the surface, it appears to be a place that helps society's unfortunates, but underneath, it's slavery without any of the uncomfortable trappings. Now, let's visit the Rimen Marketplace. Take a look around. Business seems to be thriving, but appearances can be deceiving. It may be hard to see, but the Khajiiti merchants struggle to keep their stalls open while the less bestial business people rake in the profits. Euraxia would have you believe it's a matter of work ethic, but we know better. Unfairly doesn't begin to cover it. 
Khajiiti merchants must deal with high tariffs, extra inspection fees, costly licenses. Euraxia is squeezing them for every piece of gold imaginable. She even instituted a fur tax. On the surface, it seems reasonable to make Khajiiti pay for extra inspections to ensure their fur isn't getting into the products they sell. And while they do shed, it's just another way to discriminate against the rightful citizens of this land. Come along. I want to show you the improvements Euraxia made to the palace wall. See the trebuchets. Notice how they're aimed into the city below. See how the siege weapons sit upon the walls. When it comes right down to it, you're looking at the secret of my half-sister's success. How else do you think Euraxia maintains order and keeps the elsewhere defense force at bay? She declared publicly and has repeated often that any attempt to liberate Rimen will see her unleash the full fury of the siege weapons upon the city. If Euraxia can't have Rimen, then neither can anyone else. She'd destroy the city in a heartbeat if she thought she was in danger of losing control. Of course, she tells her non-bestial subjects that only the Khajiiti districts are targeted. Absolutely not. But the lie makes her supporters feel better. The Khajiit know that even a peaceful protest could result in the destruction of Rimen. So far, no one has dared to challenge Euraxia's will in this matter, and for good reason. When we get to the palace, let me do the talking. As the Elder Tharn, I'll demonstrate my dominance over Euraxia and negotiate a cessation of hostilities. Come, Queen Euraxia's guests now. I don't like the looks of these meddlers. I say we feed them to the dragons and be done with it. I know you. I saw you through the soul shriven's eyes. You're with the fool who thinks himself the shining knight of Sirad. If only he knew what a monster I was. The horrors of Cold Harbor pale before my heinous deeds. I am my own head, yes. I am the hero of Sirad and the villain of Elsewhere. The champion of the Third Nedic Massacre and the Dark Knight they call the Betrayer. Of course not, I am the genuine article, much more real than a disembodied soul given shape in the flesh cauldrons of oblivion. But why do you presume to talk to me? I have killed greater beings than you for much, much less. Came to that conclusion by yourself, did you? <laughs> That's what they call me. There's a certain... A ring to it, but I always preferred my more grandiose titles. Champion, Slayer, Dark Knight. When I am made whole, the cats will pay for what they did to me. So you're Abner Tharn's bodyguard and valet. Not what I expected. I assume you want to follow your master into the Queen's inner sanctum, huh? I'll allow it. But first, I want to gauge the measure of your marrow. I am Queen Euraxia's chief necromancer. You may call me Zumog Foom. The other grave callers answer to me. 
And this is my familiar and confidant, Sir Cadwell the Betrayer. Ah, yes. The Betrayer saw you when it looked through the Soul Shriven's eyes. The creature you know is a pale shadow of the dark night that once walked these lands. I exhumed his remains and reanimated him. Well, his head, it was all I could find. My actions don't concern you. I just wanted to meet Abner Tharn's lackey and determine if Queen Eurexia had anything to fear. The answer is quite clear. Your insignificance rivals that of the soul-shriven fool, which makes you eminently forgettable. Now about the rest of my body, O oh pestilent one. Your insults won't hasten the process, betrayer. But there's a terrible draft in what used to be my nether regions. Presenting Abner Thorn, Grand Chancellor and Overlord of Nibine, Imperial Battle Mage of the Elder Council, and Patriarch of the Tharn Dynasty, and his bodyguard. Ah, half brother, your arrival, it's so unexceptional. Pretending to be a queen is. Hush, Abner, you bore me. Bodyguard, you look interesting. Come talk to me. You heard her. Good luck. My sources indicated that my half-brother's associate was somewhat... taller. Oh well. Now, why in the world should I even consider negotiating with members of the losing side? A warning? How thoughtful. You do know that I defeated the Khajiiti army and took control of the Rimen throne? I am no one's puppet, I assure you. But why do you suppose I have anything to do with dragons? Sweet talk? From an associate of my half-brother? <laughs> I'm flattered. Shall we retire to the dungeons? We'll engage in the most interesting activities, you and I. You'll positively beg for mercy right up until the end, and then I'll give you to Foom. You dare threaten me? Insult me? I will see you drawn and quartered for your insolence. Mulamir and I have an understanding. The dragons will secure my hold over elsewhere, and there's nothing you or my pathetic half-brother can do to stop them. Enough! Zumog Foom, what news do you bring? The Desert Wind Adaptorium has fallen. We move against Riverhold on your word. Then the word is given. Now, half-brother. Treachery? How could I ever have anticipated this? Guards, take them to the dungeons. I think not. Well, I suppose that could have gone better. I prepared for Euraxia's probable betrayal. Unfortunately, my teleport spell wasn't quite able to penetrate the palace wards. So we wound up down here, in the palace sewer. We heard two things of note. First, Euraxian forces have invaded the Desert Wind Adeptorium for some insidious purpose. And second, my vile half-sister ordered an attack on Riverhold. One thing at a time, my companion. One thing at a time. I need to recover my strength after teleporting us into this skeever hole. I'll need your help to get out of here. Then we can deal with both Desert Wind and Riverhold.
The way out, finally. I can't abide another moment in this stench. Well, that's an experience I won't be adding to my memoirs. We'll separate here. Make it harder for Euraxia's lackeys to follow us. Now, now. Things actually turned out better than I expected. We know that Euraxia wants something from the Desert Wind Editorium, and we know she's about to launch a counter-strike against Riverhold. That's not exactly true. If my power wasn't depleted, well, let's not digress. I'll go to Riverhold and warn Garish Ree. We'll make sure the city is ready for the attack. Meanwhile, you find out what's happening at the Desert Wind Adeptorium. Adeptoriums serve the same function as monasteries in other parts of Tamriel. Desert Wind and its adepts follow the order of Jean Kaj. It's west of here, on the northern lip of the Scar. Look for a side entrance if the main door is blocked. Seal the gates. Let no Euraxian enter this holy place. Invaders, this one will not allow you to enter this holy place. You do not look like one of the Usurper Queen's soldiers. Who are you, and what are you doing down here? The Speaker of the Main sent you? This one expected we were on our own, what with the dragons and the battles to the north. Zamarak came down here to seal this path, but now he thinks the Euraxians seek the Grand Adept. Desert Wind holds many Kajiti secrets, 
and the keeper of those secrets is the Grand Adept. If you truly want to help, follow Zamarak to the Grand Adept's chambers. Nine winds, no! Get to the door! Go! Save the Grand Adept! Zamarak cannot hold. Go! This one will find another way inside. You are too late. The Grand Adept revealed all before I killed her. You will fall like wheat before a blade. You are no match for my power. None can deny Euraxia or her champions. Zumog Boom, take my soul! Zumog Boom! This is the necromancer's doing. Even in death, I continue to serve. He called it a blessing. Said it would protect me. Damn him! He claimed my soul! Please, you must help me. Release me from this curse! We came for an ancient secret, protected by the Grand Adept. She put up a good fight. I'll give her that. Zumog Foom seeks the location of the betrayer's body parts. I learned where the dismembered corpse was hidden. Now, please, help me! You are wrong. The secret belongs to me. What the battle mage knew in life, she whispers to me in death. Soon, Ripperhold will fall, and the betrayer will be restored. Let the fourth wind open the way. Grand Adept! No! Zamarak has failed. This one was too slow. What has happened here? Who killed the Grand Adept? Zamarak thanks you for avenging the Grand Adept. But why did they attack this peaceful Adeptorium? Why kill a harmless old student of the Desert Winds? The Usurper Queen made a mistake when she had the Grand Adept killed. Whatever they came to find had an unintended consequence. It has roused the students of the Desert Winds. Zamarak pledges the Adepts to Garashri's cause. Euraxia will fall. We are not many, but we are strong. The Adepts of the Desert Wind will aid the city. Zamarak will see you there after he makes sure the Grand Adept receives the proper blessings. I informed Garesh Ri and Kamira about what happened in Rimen. They're mobilizing our remaining forces even as we speak. Now tell me, what did you learn at the Desert Wind Adeptorium? I often wondered who Cadwell was before he became a soul shriven. 
I know the tales of the betrayer, but I never equated the two. The Cadwell we know is so not that. We'll deal with Zumog Foom after we save Riverhold. Anything else to report? Well, that's a bit of welcome news. Many of the adepts have remarkable martial skills that we could surely make use of. Speaking of which, are you ready to help defend the city? For now, recover your strength and prepare yourself. Euraxia's forces will arrive soon and will need you ready for the battle to come. And here, take this. Garish Ree keeps handing me pouches, but I have little use for Khajiiti gold. Multiple Cadwells, necromancers, dragons, and now Euraxian soldiers marching on Riverhold. This day just keeps getting better and better. Regardless, there's much to do and not a lot of time to do it. Yes, but Garish Ree's scouts report that they're on their way. Our parley seems to have aroused Euraxia's anger. What remains of Elsewhere's militia has taken up positions around town, but I fear they are too few in number. They need your help. Garish Ree has placed the defense of the city in Kamira's hands. She moves the Desert Wind adepts, every volunteer she could muster, and what remains of the militia like pieces on a game board. Report to her, and she'll give you your orders. Find Chimera outside and see what she requires. Euraxian soldiers will soon reach Riverhold. When that happens, all oblivion will break loose. I sent Chimera out to coordinate the city's defenses while Tharn and I continue to refine our strategy. Can we hold this city? Or should we fall back? I hope the battle mage can pull a miracle out of his ear, but we cannot count on that. Yamira knows Riverhold and its people well. Her training has prepared her for this. She is more than capable of organizing our defenses and converting our strategies into actionable tactics. She is very good at getting things done. When Euraxia first conquered our home, she occupied the entire upper tier of northern Elsewhere, from Riverhold to Rimen. It took many years and much blood to retake the northwest and confine her to Rimen. I have no doubt she will attack. It won't be easy, but our strategy is sound and Kamira excels at executing tactics. Between Captain Nalado's remaining warriors and the Desert Wind adepts you brought, we should have the forces we need, provided Euraxia does not send a dragon. <laughs> 